Hey guys, it's time for a Stolen Valor I've really wanted to talk about for a while, but I wanted to let the dust settle because it's been uh, all over YouTube. Everybody's been talking about it. But that is uh, a gentleman by the name of J.R. Majewski. J.R. Majewski, he's running for a congressional seat in the state of Ohio. And I guess he hasn't been 100% truthful with his military service, even though he is basing his career uh, off of his Air Force veteran status. So I did a little bit of digging. I've read some articles. Uh, I mean, this is nothing new. I mean, we can go back a ways and talk about uh, Blumenthal from Connecticut with his Vietnam veteran statements, which, uh, of course, he retracted and stated, well, I was a Vietnam era veteran, not a Vietnam veteran, uh, you know. These are politicians and they lie. I think it's part of them. Um, I mean, just listen to the crap you hear on the news every day. And it doesn't matter which political party you're affiliated with. Uh, they're all full of shit. But anyway, I wanted to let the dust settle on this one a little bit and uh, wait and see what came out. Uh, the Associated Press got all of his records and they've in numerous articles talked about it, but uh, he's claiming to be a Air Force combat veteran, uh, and then the nature of his service uh, and why he was barred to re-enlistment. Uh, he did four years. Uh, he rose to the illustrious rank of E3, which is not uncommon for someone who's been in two, three years. They can make that E3 rank if they start off as an E1. And uh, then was reduced in rank back to E2, and that's how he finished his career, as an E2. That's one step above entry level. Um, and that was due to something that happened overseas. So I figured, what better place to uh, show you guys and bring this up than the Air Force Times? Ooh, the Air Force's official newspaper. They've got an article on it. So I figured I'd just show you guys that. We'll talk a little bit about it. And uh, you can make up your own mind whether uh, you would vote for this guy or not if you're in Ohio. But, uh, yeah, just something that's been in the news and I've wanted to do a video on it, so I'm doing it now. Let's take a quick look at the Air Force Times. Oh, not sure why that's so small, so we're going to enlarge that a little bit so you guys can see it better and blot me out of the picture here. Records contradict House candidates' account of military punishment. So they're talking about the military punishment he received while he was in the military and why his rank was reduced to E2 and he was barred from reenlistment. So let's take a look. Republican J.R. Majewski has centered his campaign for a competitive Ohio congressional seat around his biography as an Air Force veteran. Uh, there was a big question that popped up. Why he could not re-enlist in the Air Force after his initial four years were up? Well, um, his campaign put out there that he was demoted after getting in a brawl in the barracks in 2001. However, the Associated Press gets his records and finds out that is incorrect. He received a OUI or D DWI or whatever they call it, but he was stopped for drunk driving on an Air Force base in Japan in September 2001. And then we've got another related one here. Called himself a combat vet. Uh, records show he wasn't. And that is correct. So uh, let's take a look. Documents provided to the AP independently authenticated present yet another instance where the recorded history of Majewski's service diverges from what he has told voters as he campaigns, using that veteran status as a leading credential. So not only has he said that he was a Air Force combat vet, and he was in Afghanistan. 
But when they look at his records, there's nothing there about it. But then he says it's classified. Oh, the spooky classified stuff. Anyway, uh, his response, this mistake is now more than 20 years old. I'm sure we've all done something as young adults that we look back on and wonder, what was I thinking? He's probably looking back to when he made these statements about, what was I thinking? Why did I lie about this stuff? Uh, and he's only coming forward because he got caught. Uh, he started his campaign, campaign to unseat the current Democrat that's in there, uh, repeatedly saying that he was a combat veteran who served a tour of duty under tough circumstances in Afghanistan. Well, he was actually stationed in Qatar, loading aircraft. Uh, could he have gotten on an airplane and unloaded an aircraft in Afghanistan? Yep, he sure could. Doesn't make you a combat vet. That makes you a unloader in Afghanistan for a day or two, and then back to where you're stationed. You have to be stationed in a combat zone. I know in the Army, uh, you don't even get your right sleeve patch, combat patch, till you've been in country 30 days. So... Not qualified as a combat veteran if you just pop in there and grab a cup of green bean coffee and unload your airplane and take off. His story came under intense scrutiny last week when the AP, citing military documents obtained through public records requests, that's right, SF-180s get you all that stuff, reported that he did not deploy to Afghanistan as he claimed, but instead spent six months based in Qatar where he helped load and unload aircraft. Yep. Polish a turd, it's still a turd. The latest revelation uh, was that he was demoted for drunken driving adds another wrinkle. That's right. He said he was in a brawl or a fight or something in the barracks when in fact he got popped on a OUI and got reduced to the rank of E2. And that's the way he finished out his career, as an E-2 with a border re-enlistment. Oh, jeez. He was in a fight in his dormitory with another service member. Dormitory, they don't call them barracks. Dormitory. Tough conditions would be facilities that are less than four-star for Air Force. They are the kinder, gentler service, but they do deal with a lot of high-tech stuff. They have great living conditions, great food. I've been to Air Force bases. They're awesome. Their quarters are unbelievable. It's like a five-star hotel. Um, so tough conditions to him would have been, I don't know. I, I, I just, I can't even render a guess as to what his tough conditions were. And... Uh, you know, the, the records obtained by the AP, they didn't, there was no mention of any fight in there and that he was reduced for drunken driving at Kadena Air Base in Japan on September 8th, 2001. So, uh, yep, he one notch above entry and that's what he carried the rest of his career. They got a little blurb here uh, from those documents. When you decided to get behind the wheel of a vehicle after indulging in intoxicating liquor, you brought discredit upon yourself, 733rd Air Mobility Squadron and the Air Force. Go figure. And any further misconduct wouldn't be tolerated, blah, blah, blah. Um, he got 30 days of extra duty in addition to the demotion. And he signed it, showing that he did consult a lawyer and waived his right to a court-martial. Also waived his right to appeal the punishment and requested that the document not become public. Hello? Public records. They're out there now. And uh, then they mentioned, in some cases, a DUI could be a career-ending violation in the military. That is correct. Uh... The, any military branch, they have a very strict uh, policy on OUIs. So then he was reassigned, went to uh, Qatar, and he was a staging ground for operations in Afghanistan. That's where he was loading and unloading aircraft. 
And he continues to insist that he did indeed serve in Afghanistan. And he wouldn't give any specifics because he said the details were classified. Oh, my God. How many times do we hear guys say, it's classified? I can't tell you. But he's talking about it. And he won't get into the specifics. But there's a difference between deploying to a country and touching down there. Exactly. That's what I was just saying. Uh, he was saying he was a combat vet deployed to Afghanistan, but he was never deployed to Afghanistan. He was in Qatar. So, uh, he, he gave a statement. He said he was aboard outbound transport flights to forward bases and combat zones throughout the Middle East, including Afghanistan. Well, at the time, I don't think we had any other ones. Oh, jeez. Just dig a hole, dude. He also said joining the Air Force at the age of 20 was fulfilling yet challenging. Oh, boy. Tough work. I'm proud of my service and experiences that made me who I am today. So a drunk airman getting an OUI is what you are today? But I have never claimed to have undergone a tough combat tour in Afghanistan or suggested that I was engaged in active firefights. Yeah, unless they were shooting air shot, airsoft at each other in the back of the airplane. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, they, his campaign promoted him as a combat veteran uh, during an August interview and a podcast. And he had a tough time in life while serving a tour of duty in Afghanistan, which he never served. Um, he couldn't discuss it because it was classified. That's a red flag to any of us who investigate stolen valor. Um, and this last bit, Ed Caffrey, also known as uh, the average NCO on YouTube, he did a piece on him as well and also uh, made a comment here. And uh, Ed's a former master sergeant. I've been on his show uh, we did a live stream together where we took apart a, a uniform. Uh, Ed's a super great guy, uh, retired Air Force Master Sergeant, and he teaches journalism out in New Mexico University. Go look up his channel. He's got some great content. Um, and even as this scrutiny intensifies, he's given no indication that he intends to drop out of the race and has continued to campaign. Good for him. He's a politician. They're all full of shit. That's all I can say about that. But I wanted to bring you some, uh, just a little tidbit of Stolen Valor because it's been a while. Racing season's over, so I'm going to get back into my Stolen Valor stuff. Um, I still get a whole bunch of records requests out. I haven't got back. I don't know what's going on. I'm going to have to start refiling yet again for maybe the second or third time on some of these. But I do have some stuff in the wings waiting to get uh, posted here on YouTube. Anyway... If you like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up. Helps the algorithm. Hit the bell for notifications. Hey, if you're out there still riding on two wheels, make sure you keep that shiny side up, rubber side down. And as always, guys, have yourself a great day.